שלום לכם ושבוע טוב. שלום לך, עליזה, שלום לך, ימי. עליזה, אני מתחילה איתך. בשמחה. זה כבר לא פעם ראשונה שאת נמצאת איתנו, אבל עכשיו את נמצאת איתנו, אנחנו הולכים לדבר על British Yiddish and Kiddish 2. Part 2, נכון. ספרי לי קצת מה את עושה מאז והיום. אני עושה כל מיני, אבל שנה שעברה, יש צדקה בשם חי לייפליין, ותכף ימי יספר לכם קצת על חי לייפליין. אבל כל שנה חי לייפליין עושים... They do a big event. אוקיי. Okay. אז לפני שנה, ובדרך כלל זה תוכנית מוזיקלית, מביאים מישהו מפורסם להופיע. שנה שעברה הם ביקשו ממני לכתוב, כי אני כותבת הרבה הפקות פה בטורונטו, וגם בניו יורק, אז כתבתי British, Yiddish and Kiddish. למה? כי הם הביאו שלושה זמרים. הביאו סיימון ספיירו, שהוא מוכר כ-The British Jazz Singer, okay. למה? כי הוא בא מאנגליה, והג'אז סינגר, הסיפור של הג'אז סינגר זה מישהו שגם עשה קריירה בחזנות וגם עשה קריירה במוזיקה פופולרית. אז סיימן okay. ספיירו was always called the British Jazz Singer, כי הוא, הייתה לו בעצם שתי קריירות. אז זה הבריטיש. יידיש זה הזמר מייק ברסטן. מייק ברסטן הוא הבדרן היידיש מספר אחת בעולם היום, הוא גם okay. היה בברודווי כמה פעמים, no. הוא מה זה מצחיק, והוא פשוט על הכיפאק. וקידיש, בריטיש יידיש אנד קידיש, זה חזן יצחק מאייר הלפקאט, שהוא נחשב החזן של הדור. אז הביאו שלושה הזמרים האלה, וביקשו ממני לכתוב... מחזמר, כתבתי הופעה, British Yiddish Kiddish, הייתה מוצלחת, והשנה עושים British Yiddish and Kiddish Part 2, שזה עוד חומר עם אותם זמרים. אז מה לנו שונה מפרט 1 לפרט 2? לאלו שראו את... שאלה טובה. קודם כל אני אגיד לך מה אותו דבר. אוקיי. זה אותם זמרים, סיימן ספיירו, מייק ברסטן והלפקאט, ויש לנו תזמורת של 60 מוזיקאים, 60 נגנים. ומנצח ראסל גר, שהוא מפרסך, ידוע, מנצח ידוע מאוסטרליה, okay. שהוא חי עכשיו בניו יורק, אבל הוא יבוא. והתזמורת, they are hand selected, זה לא תזמורת שבדרך כלל מנגנים ביחד. ביחד, בוחרים אותם אחד-אחד. אחד, 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 okay. אחד במיוחד להופעה okay. הזאת. עכשיו, מה שונה? Uh, oh, and the narrator is Tom Allison. Tom Allison... הוא uh, זמר שחקן בטלוויזיה, בברודווי, בכל uh, mm. מיני הפקות פה בטורונטו, בקנדה. אז uh, that is the team, זה הצוות. Um, מה ששונה, יש לנו כל מיני הפתעות. Oh. חומר חדש לשלושתם. אז, שנה שעברה זה היה פעם ראשונה שהלפקאד עשה כל מיני שטיק. אני לא יודעת איך אומרים שטיק בעברית. הם מבינים, לא, לא שטויות, זה לא שטויות. כל ישראלי יודעים מה שטיק זה. בדיוק, כל השטיקים שלנו, אנחנו לא מבינים. נכון, אז יש הרבה, הרבה חומר מצחיק, ויש גם מוזיקה ברודווי, וג'אז, ואופרה, וחזנות, ויידיש, ועברית, ו... מתי זה? זה ב-30 למרץ, יום חמישי בלילה. ברוי תומסון הול. וואו. וואו, טוב. אז, אז אני חושבת שאנחנו נעבור לימי, אבל אתם תסלחו לי, אנחנו נדבר קצת באנגלית וקצת בעברית. כל, הכב, כל הכבוד לך שאתה מדבר עברית, נכון? צריך להגיד נכון. את הדברים הטובים. נכון, לא, מדבר יופי. אז, אני אוהבת את אלו שמדברים שמדבר, עברית. אז בוא אני אשאל אותך, How did you get started in high lifeline? And what does it mean to you, high lifeline? Um, well, first of all, High Lifeline, I was involved already be- as a single kid in New York, a teenager. It was, I guess, a very popular charity in the United States um, to volunteer for. I had a lot of friends volunteering for them. Um, essentially, they offer 25 year-round programs that are all free of charge for children with pediatric and long-life illnesses or diseases. But not only them, their siblings, their parents, so anything needed to really hold the family together at their time of crisis, they do. Um, when I originally got involved with them, they have a summer camp, which many people know about, called Camp Simcha. It's upstate New York, and they have children, sick children from all over the world who come in for that, and it's an unbelievable place, 80 acres of just heaven. Kids get whatever they want. The programs are amazing. They have doctors and infirmaries. Everything, on, everything is I mean, there. It's, 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 I'm listening to you, and it's, it's great. 
it's sad and it's like I'm sad. It's not sad. It's I know. Happy. That's what I was going to say. It's sad, but I'm not. I'm happy to hear it. It's, it's so, the happiest place on earth. Right. When people think Disney is. This really That's is. For these kids you know? who go to camp, for the time that they're there, they completely forget about their illness. They forget it. Their parents get a break. Their siblings get a break. It's forgotten. It's beautiful. So when I experienced that, like the first time I experienced that, I just wanted to be connected to them forever. And then when I moved from New York to here 10 years ago, I, a friend of mine, Morty Rothman, who's the executive director of High Lifeline mm -hmm. here, had just started about six months before, for the first time, brought High Lifeline to Canada. Uh, before that, it was in the States, it was in England, it was in Israel, and I volunteered in the States, in Israel, and in England before. But when I moved here, I was shocked that it didn't exist here. Um, so at the time when I moved here, I think they were dealing with somewhere around 12 local families. Today, we're servicing currently Right now, today, I don't Unfor know if I want unfortunately, to hear it. I don't know if I want to hear it. But, but it's yeah. important for people I, to know is, because it it's a shocking number, and very often you really don't know what people are going through. Yeah. Um, which is a big challenge as far as the organization from a fundraising perspective. They can't run around telling people what they do because a lot of this is very private and personal. Yeah. And um, currently, and I, 400 yeah. local families in Toronto wow. are getting help from High Life. But I want to stop, and I want to actually tell the viewer. אז אנחנו נהפוך לעברית עכשיו, כמה זה חשוב שאם יש איזה משפחות שנמצאים במצוקה ולא יודעים לאיפה ללכת, שיש פה מישהו שיכול לעזור, אז, אם, אז אני מנסה להבין, מה זה צריך, מה, what's the criteria for, for getting help from, from high life? I mean, if you have a sick child, we're there to help you. Um, it could be financial assistance, emotional assistance, help with the siblings or the other kids, tutoring, meals to the hospital, uh, shuttles back and forth. Kids need transfusions three times a week. The parents can't take off of work every Is time. Is there we'll age send limit someone. for children? No. 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 We have, we have newborns, we have teenagers, everything in between. And what's interesting is not just what they do, because as Yami said, they, they have tutoring for the siblings, right. and counseling and help for the whole family. It's very discreet. אני בחנוכה, זה חייב להיות דיסקרטי. אבל זה מדהים. כן. אני בחיים לא ראיתי משהו כזה. בחנוכה הם הזמינו אותי ובא לי לראות את המסיבה שלהם, של החגים. Only for the families. Just כן. for the families של חלפיין. אז היינו שם, וזה כל מיני דברים כיפיים לעשות, זה היה ברינקס אנטרטיינמנט סנטר בטורונטו. אז היה ממש ערב כיף לכל המשפחה, בחדר ענק עם מתנות וצעצועים, וכל הילדים יכולים לבוא ולקחת. אז אני אמרתי למורטי רוטמן, שהוא המדריך, אני חושב, מנהל של, של קנדה, אמרתי, why don't you have press here? למה אין לך עיתונאים? Yeah. וזה, הוא אמר, אסור לנו, oh. למה? את יודעת למה? אני, אני מתארת לעצמי, you, you אמר, won't believe it. You won't believe this. הוא אמר, יש כמה ילדים פה שאפילו הסבים שלהם לא יודעים שהם חולים mm -hmm. עדיין, אז לא רוצים שום דבר, הם... לא כותבים על זה, אה, אסור להם להביא צלמים. זה משהו, מה, מה שהם עושים למשפחות האלה זה לא יאומן. זה, it's such a good cause. תראי, אני רוצה להגיד לכם שאם יש, אם יש, <laughs> אם יש שם איזה אנשים שצריכים את העזרה, ואם יש ילד חולה, עם כל הצער וכל הכאב, לפחות לדעת שיש מקום שאתם יכולים לקבל עזרה. אז אה, ממש אני שמחה, אני שמחה לדעת שאפשר לעזור למשפחות. אבל בואו נמשיך, תסביר לי, אוקיי. וזה לא רק ליהודים, אנחנו פה מדברים בעברית ואנחנו יהודים, אבל הם עוזרים לכל מי שצריך עזרה. את ראית איזשהו אורגניזיישן של יהודים שלא עוזרים לכולם? נכון. נכון, אבל מה, השם... זה היופי שלנו. כן, אבל הבעיה היא שהשם של הצדקה הזאת, חי לייפליין, זה נשמע יהודי. אז יש כאלה אנשים ש... אבל זה יהודי. ואנחנו, you, פותחים, נכון. ואנחנו פותחים את הדלת לכולם. נכון. זה, זה, זה נכון. היופי ש, ש, שאצלנו הישראלים היהודים, שיש נכון. לנו לב רחב. נכון. Okay. וזה צדקה, ואנשים נכון. נותנים כסף. אז לא רק אם, אם יש לכם, אם אתם צריכים עזרה, חס וחלילה. זה גם so that, תרומות. אבל את צריכה להבין, את צריכה להבין, כדי שלקבל תרומות צריכים לדעת מי, מי, נכון. מה הם עושים ומי הם. כי עד עכשיו אני שמעתי קצת... אבל לא ידעתי בדיוק מה הם עושים. אז אני מקווה שלאט לאט תחזרו, תספרו לנו עוד, אנשים יראו מה אתם עושים, וזה לאט לאט יעזרו לכם מכל הצדדים. אז בואו... אני אגיד לך משהו על זה, רק על זה. 
there are there are a lot of amazing organizations yes. out there that help children, sick children, but this uh, organization in particular, mm -hmm. it's very different when you have a child who's born with a disease or an illness. You know before they're born already yes. there's a problem, or you know right when they're born, and you adjust your life accordingly. Right. Imagine you have a kid, God forbid, in eighth grade, and in the middle of eighth grade, his world comes crashing down. It's the family it's, just shatters oh, on absolutely. the spot. No one knows. It's chaos. Fauda, right? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, complete chaos. No, it, it, and really, it's it's so important to hold marriages fall apart between the parents. The the kids start failing out of school. The sibling, it's everything. Yeah. You got to hold the family together, and and really, they do an amazing it is job. Their life of doing changes. That. Their life in the second. Change in a, yeah. In a second. Yeah, I was going to say a minute, but you're right. Yeah. It's in a second. Their life changes. Exactly. Okay. So so what is what do you do for life? For High Lifeline. For, for High, High Lifeline? Lifeline? Yes. Um, well, for the first year when I came here, like mm -hmm. I said, they had started about six months <coughs> earlier, and they were having trouble getting traction and getting their name out there and getting the people in the community to understand who they are and what they do and why they're important. And Toronto, we live in an amazing city. There's a lot of big philanthropy here. Yes. People who are very involved in organizations, but at the same time, there are also people who are very disciplined who've been supporting the same organizations for many years and like everyone has their thing. So it's very hard to penetrate this market that is so conscious about giving because they're so conscious of giving, they're very calculated also how sure. they give. It's very different than New York or other places. So at the time I said to them, I think unless you do something, you know, blow Thanks. something huge, no one's going to, you're always going to be chasing your tail. You're not going to really know. No one's going to, you want the city to know on one night, you're here, and this is what you do. So the idea came up, I brought up the idea to make a big concert at Roy Thompson Hall. Um, at the time, the New York office, because this was like a startup, they were really holding their hand here with everything. They said, absolutely not. The office here said, absolutely not. Nobody wanted to let me do it. And I said to them, I didn't ask you for money. I didn't ask you to commit anything. If it doesn't work, I'm going to pay for it. Wow. You have nothing to lose. Oh, I, 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 I just heard Roy no, Thompson no, well, Hall. I know. No, Roy Thompson Hall, the first year was Roy Thompson Hall. 60, every year has been Roy Thompson Hall. 65-piece symphony orchestra, wow. a 50-piece choir, and six musicians, like singers, artists from New York, from Israel, from all over. It was massive. Uh, and been. we had billboards, and we had radio ads, and we had TV. It was, it was huge. And I just said, well, if you don't do it that way, you'll never, you'll never get there. Um, and uh, at the time, the founder and executive director of the international organization who's based in New York, he still didn't want me to do it because he thought that I didn't know myself what I'm getting into and that they're going to suffer in some way. So he gave me an ultimatum. This was Wednesday. He gave me an ultimatum and said, if by Friday you don't raise $150,000 of sponsorships, we're not doing this. Wow. I had two days. Wow. So I, uh, emailed I, him on, I emailed him on Friday morning, and I said, we have 200 already. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. Um, I think wow. 10 years later, I could look at the camera and tell the truth. I didn't. But we figured it out. <laughs> and we figured it out. And uh, how hard is it to get good. a pledge? <laughs> Jews love pledging. Yeah. They don't like paying, but they like well, pledging. Pledge. Every Jew yeah. likes to pledge. Oh, so I, got, I spent two days getting amazing pledges. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and the rest thank is God history. the rest is history. Yeah. Thank God that first year, the organization not only got on the map and everybody, you have to understand also the, the Jewish community, which this show was geared towards, never saw a show like this. They don't, we don't have shows like this every day of the week. We don't have them at all. So this like shocked people. They knew exactly what High Lifeline was about because we make sure, and we could talk about this more, to really work in right. about the organization in a very subtle way throughout the show. And the first year we raised $750,000 for them. The idea, my goal was to break even. That's all I wanted the first year. If we break even and we do a show like this and we let the community know exactly what yeah. the organization's about. Awareness, yeah. We'll be okay. We mm. made $750,000 the first year and yeah. this is That's our 10th wonderful. year doing it. Time flies. Yes, but it's going to be a great show this year. <clears throat> Shana, Zolechliot, this year is special, suits. yes. And it's very I think special. it's also important to mention from a, um, uh, I guess from the... Uh, I don't even know the word. Maybe I should speak in Hebrew. Um, <laughs> from a production standpoint, yes. that especially when Aliza wrote the show last year and this year, mm -hmm. she has a way to 
push the artist artistically to do things that they've never done before or never even think about. If I would have asked Halfgott in the early years when we had him the first year, yes. sing Italian, sing English, do shtick, wear a different costume, Nothing, to, colonia, nothing yeah. to talk about. This is, oh, I know. She can, she can get them to do things that yeah, nobody yeah. else does. It's not a concert of a concert. It's a concert of... הכל. It's a real variety show. אני אוהבת חזנות. חזנות זה, זה, איך אומרים, לא מהעולם הזה, זה דבר מהמם. כן. לשמוע חזנות. יש קצת חזנות. קצת חזנות. אבל יש, יש הכל. There's a little of everything for everybody. נכון. We have many non-Jews who come who love it. And kids, teenagers, teenagers can come. הם ייהנו מזה. אני אומרת לך, זה לכל המשפחה. זה יופי של ערב. חבר'ה, השלושים למרץ, יש לנו הופעה ברוי תומסון הול, אנחנו נשים את כל האינפורמציה, ואני מקווה שתקבלו הרבה, שהרבה ישראלים גם יתעניינו בזה וייקחו יוזמה ויבואו. נכון, נכון. מה את עוד רוצה לספר לנו? יש לנו בדיוק דקה. יש לנו בדיוק דקה? Yeah. שתודה רבה לך, no. גילה. זה פתוח תמיד לכל הקהילה שלנו. כן. מתי שאתם רוצים. ימי. It's a great show. I'll tell you every single year. I mean, I don't know, you can't notice, but we're from a different generation. Um, and every year I have friends who tell me, oh, I hate Chazanut, I hate that. This is not for me. I'll come for you. And, and every single year people say, I can't believe I've never come. This is amazing. I'm for sure coming next year. So like Aliza said, it really appeals to everybody. It's an amazing show. It's amazing entertainment. I, even myself, I didn't think I would like it, but I love it. We are honoring Mayor Tory, the mayor of Toronto, Yesham Gam. And he's been very good to our community also, so I think it's important. He's always been good. But I think it's important, especially for our community, especially in light of the recent anti-Semitic attacks and how he responded to that, for the community to come and show support to him. and show our appreciation to him. I agree, 100%. Aliza, you always know that you come. You come, you come. It was a little bit short. We'll see you now. We'll see what you see from the project that is going to be in the 30th of March. And I hope you come and take the card and come. Thank you, Yami. Thank you. Come back and talk just about the project. Anything you want. Okay, you're back. Aliza, thank you very much. תודה רבה לכם, ואני אגיד לכם שלום ולהתראות בשבוע הבא. Each time that second hand swings to the top Like that the lions up they pop Their ears so big, their eyes so white And though I feed them both to fight baloney Let the dream begin Let your darker side give in To the power of the music that I write The power of the music Drinking ginger ale, the kitchen jump the small honey. Drink up, drink up, me laddies. Let I hear the whole day long. Drink up, drink up, let I hear when you hear the kiddish song. Tell me, would we, could we? Two Jewish cannibals. are sitting in Africa, in the jungle, stirring the pot. One Jewish cannibal says to the other, Moshe, you know something? I really hate my shviga, my mother-in-law. The other one says, so just eat the noodles. <laughs> Shabbos, the shine of the sun, the light of the
on March 30th at Roy Thompson Hall for the 10th anniversary show. This year we honor Mayor John Tory. Get your tickets today at highconcert.com or call 1-888-416-HIGH. That's 1-888-416-2424.